Hi, it's Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy. I want to talk about some of the common questions we receive here in our office, and I think you're going to be interested in, in knowing the answer. These are things that people didn't understand, and they called us to try to find out the, what really they should they should understand. So we had a call this week from someone who said, hey, listen, Jim, my bike fell off my car while I was traveling down the road and another vehicle ran over it. You know, am I covered? Um, this is really amazing how often this happens. Uh, I think that the two things really come into play. When a bicycle falls off a car at highway speeds, either the, the rack fails or it wasn't secured properly on the rack, car then runs over it on the road, but you know, they can also cause injury to somebody else. And your bike goes tumbling down the road, maybe it's 50 or 60 miles an hour and goes off the road, maybe hits a pedestrian. So it raises a lot of implications about your own personal liability. And obviously the question you have is, am I covered for this? So the first thing I would tell somebody in this situation is, you know, check your auto insurance carrier first. You should get covered by them uh, for something that's attached to the vehicle and falls off while you're in motion. Um, in one case recently, the vehicle that was following and ran over the bike claimed they had $10,000 in damage to their own vehicle. So you wanna make sure you, you are covered. The other thing that is possible when you have somebody that gets injured, hey Steve, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, the other thing that you can consider is whether you might be covered by homeowners insurance as well. So I would start with my automobile insurance uh, for the protection that they afford. And if for some reason you don't have coverage there or can't get it, then if you own a home, there's an opportunity potentially to get covered by your homeowners insurance. Um, I hope that helps with that one. The other one would be someone who is injured on their bike because of a vehicle pulling out in front or towards them and stopping suddenly or missing them. So what I would call a near miss. So in a near miss situation, does the driver still have responsibility or can they be found at fault when they didn't actually hit me, but because of them pulling into my path or frightening me or pulling so close to me, they caused me to fall down and get injured. Uh, we actually have some experience doing these cases. Uh, I had a case in Tampa a few years ago where my client is driving down the road, as we all do on the right-hand side, and a car is coming out of a condominium parking lot. Well, they approached the road as if they were going to come onto the road, apparently saw the cyclist coming at the last minute, hit the brakes. But at that point, they were right on the edge of the bike line, and um, the person fell off their bike. They were injured pretty significantly. It's interesting in, in, in some of these cases that uh, the initial response from the insurance company in that case was they didn't believe the claim could even be possible because we didn't make contact with your, with your client. Uh, that all got worked out when I explained the law to them. The other, we had another situation not long ago where someone is driving down the road on their bike in the bike lane, the car is gonna pull out of a side road they don't stop at the stop sign. They pull directly into the lane of traffic. The lead cyclist ahead of my client was able to stop and miss the vehicle, but my client ran into the lead cyclist because they stopped so suddenly and this person got injured pretty significantly as well. So this raises a whole area of law we call the zone of risk. So when you or I do something that's negligent, we create what we could, what you could call the zone of risk. It's an area that you didn't hit them, you didn't come that close to, to knock them off their bike, but you created a zone of risk. You raised the risk for the person who got injured so that as a result of what I did, I pulled too close to them, pulled out in front of them, backed out of a driveway and stopped suddenly before I, I ran into them, it creates a zone of risk and the person trying to avoid the motorist then falls off their bike and suffers a broken fractured hip or a collarbone or something like that. So there is liability for the person who drove the vehicle backwards onto the road, stopped suddenly. These near misses can create liability. It's all a question of how close did they come? What was their speed, the circumstances of the crash? So definitely when you have that situation, it needs to be looked at by a very knowledgeable bicycle injury lawyer to make sure that the person gets the coverage that they're entitled to get. Um, I had a call also this week, another one was someone who, they were a member of a pickup group 
So they're not a, in an organized bicycle ride or a scheduled ride for one of the clubs, but they were on a pickup group. So this is a meetup and uh, the concern was whether during one of these rides, if the cyclist causes an injury to another cyclist, you know, your wheels overlap or you run into somebody or you somehow cause injury to a cyclist, are you covered? Is their insurance is going to cover you in that situation? You know, a lot of times if you're on an organized bicycle club ride, there's going to be insurance coverage through the bike club for some of that. Uh, it doesn't protect it entirely, but, and there's also some protection about not being able to bring a claim against somebody on an organized bicycle ride. I think most of the clubs have a provision that says you can't do that. But on these pickup groups, or maybe you're riding by yourself, you're riding singly and something happens. And the allegation is that you did something wrong. You know, you were, you did something that causes liability for you. And I guarantee you when, when someone goes down hard, uh, the inclination of people is to try to find a lawyer to raise the issue of liability on the person that made them go down. I know a lot of people have the philosophy that they just wouldn't bring a claim in that situation, but the whole world doesn't share our feelings about that. So the personal liability of a cyclist, when they do something, either run into a pedestrian, hit another cyclist, do something that raises the issue of fault when someone's been injured, the first line of defense is typically if you own a home, you're going to report it to your homeowner's insurance carrier because their general liability policy for you on your homeowner's policy should extend to you on your bike and should offer you protection when you're riding that way. Um, that would be the thing that I would do first. Of course, I'm always talking about Velo Assurance, and I'm sure you might have seen our interview with Dave Williams a couple of weeks ago. You can catch it on our Facebook Live program here in the archive. Uh, Dave uh, is the president of Velo Assurance, which is the largest bicycle insurer in Florida that I'm aware of. And they have a component of liability insurance on their policy as well, I believe, but you need to verify that with them. So if you don't own a home, check with Velo Insurance as to whether they would offer that coverage or that's something you can purchase through them that would give you coverage, give you some measure of comfort about being out on the road and exposing someone to danger potentially by something we, you do. You know, in some states, they have uh, this doctrine called the assumption of the risk that when you or I are involved in an activity like bicycle riding that does have an element of risk, in some states, there is this law that if you participate knowing the risk, then you can't, you've assumed responsibility for your own care and you can't bring a claim against someone when, or, when an injury does occur. Florida doesn't have that rule. Uh, I know we have a lot of people that come from other states and we have, sometimes you hear these kinds of things. In Florida, when someone is injured, you look to the conduct of the person who caused the injury and you look at the conduct of the person who was injured. And the question is, is there liability on one of them, on both of them, or could the liability or responsibility be shared between them? It's what we call comparative fault. And when you're evaluating a claim, the defense is always looking to see, can we put fault on the plaintiff? The plaintiff is always putting, wants to put all the fault on the person who caused the injury, the defendant. And you have this dynamic tension of looking to the conduct of both, pe both people to find out um, where the, the argument for fault can lie. So you want to have the sense that when you're out riding, because things happen in our lives, we don't intend, un unintended consequences occur, that you feel comfortable that you do have coverage should the unfortunate event happen and someone's pointing a finger at you saying, hey, you should have been more careful. So um, your first line of defense is generally going to be your homeowner's insurance policy. Um, we have a free offer for you today. I've got the, um, if you're eight things to do after you've been involved in a uh, bike collision, um, Katie's got the link to get that free report on your on your screen. I want to thank everybody for joining with us today. We've got an interview on the 20th of September with Phil, who's going to talk to us about um, e-bikes and all things e-bikes. Uh, Phil is the owner of Pedelec down in Punta Gorda, and uh, it's got a real interesting bike shop. I think you're going to learn a lot about e-bikes during that interview. I want you, hope you can join us at 10 o'clock on the 20th. Um, and 
So that's all I've got from the Florida Bike Guy today. We're your uh, Florida bicycle and injury lawyer. If I can help you in any way, be safe out there.